Hello, and welcome to episode eight of your favorite McDuffie County themed podcast, McDuffie Minute. We continue to bring you important information about the governments of McDuffie County, Thompson, Daring, the school system, and all points between. I'm one of your hosts, Christopher Wells. And I'm Jason Smith. We're coming to you today from Thompson High School as we talk to the cast members of the Bulldog Players Spring Musical. We're going to find out about the story behind this year's show, Violet, and how you can get tickets to come support these talented students. And they'll tell us just why they enjoy being a part of the drama program here at Thompson High. So why don't we start there? We're going to have everybody introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Abby Rockefeller, and I'm playing Violet in this year's production of Violet. I'm Madison Hildebrand, and I'm playing the old lady in The Barfly in this year's production of Violet. Hi, I'm Haley Romans, and I play young Violet in this year's musical, Violet. I'm Wesley Walker. I am the drama and chorus teacher at Thompson High School and the director of Violet. All right, so thanks for coming to talk about the show. Can you all guys tell us a little bit about what made you interested in theater in the first place? I became interested in theater at a very young age from watching um, movies and stuff like that. I always had a aspiring to be an actress. But really, when I was in elementary school and we used to come see the junior shows at the high school, I just thought those people were like so cool and like famous. And I was like, if I could like get there, I would be it in life. And I never thought I would be able to like even touch the stage. And the fact that I'm able to be there now is like really, really cool. But I got started in the eighth grade. Yeah. And doing The Adams Family. So I've been doing it ever since. Okay. So I feel the same way you do. Um, it was always fun to come over from like elementary school and watch um, all the high schoolers be able to put on shows and think that they were like everything, like they were famous to us. And it was really nice to be in middle school. And I was invited in seventh grade during Annie Get Your Gun. And I got hooked and I've been doing it ever since. I was first interested in theater when I came my ninth grade year and I did my first musical um Elf the Musical and it confirmed like how much I love musicals and how much I enjoy singing I've been singing all my life and I've always loved musicals so when I first did my first one it was great and I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of the years of my high school well just for the record I'm doing all I can to not put out Willy Wonka's Violet you're turning all violent line up <laughs> <laughs> now that it's out I'm starting over okay so thank y'all for that but moving theoretically past high school. Uh, do you have interest in doing this in college, maybe as a career? Where do you see that going for you from here? Personally, it's not in my career goals at this time, but I really don't think I could ever fully give it up because I feel like it's a part of me at this point, but it would just be here and there. It wouldn't necessarily be a career. I absolutely do see it in my career. Um, I want to go to college to be a musical theater teacher like Mr. Walker. And it's been an idea really since I started. I've always thought it'd be so cool to be the person putting it on instead of being the person on stage. I actually have no idea what I want to do when I go to college, but I know that whenever I think about not doing musicals ever again, that it makes me sad inside. So I think possibly I will do it in college, possibly not, but we'll see where life takes me. Well, for the record, it's okay. I'm 50 and I still don't know what I'm doing with my life. So we're all good. <laughs> All right. So I understand that not many people are familiar with the musical you're doing this, this spring. I'm, and I've, I've heard that from you, Mr. Walker. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about it without giving anything away, of course, uh, so that people will know, you know who wrote it, um, what they can expect from the music and the story? Well, let me start before I let the girls take over and tell, uh, tell y'all what the story is about. But um, this musical, Violet, is written by one of my favorite composers, Janine Tesori, who... Um, is one of the only women to ever win the Tony Award for best um, score of a musical. She's won it twice now. She actually won it this past year for Kimberly Akimbo, and she won it in 2016-ish for Fun Home. And um, she's just one of my favorites. And like I tell the students, um, I, when I'm working on something for three months, I have to like it. So uh, after thinking about who can play the roles, uh, if we have the capabilities, um, if we have the – um, sort of logistical uh, stuff together to play it, to do a certain show. I also just ultimately have to like it because it is my job and I do have to do it every single day of the week for months. And so the kids know that. Um, and so ultimately the reason I probably picked this musical is uh, the music 
written by Janine Tesori, lyrics by Brian Crawley. And um, I'm really excited. I've never seen a high school production of any Janine Tesori musical. I know that Thoroughly Modern Millie is done in high schools. I've never personally seen one. But the rest of her shows are pretty obscure, and um, this is one of them. And I'm excited to introduce a new story to our community. Anybody else want to share anything about the story behind the, uh, the musical? So this story follows a young girl who has been in a tragic accident with, um, she's got hit in the face with an axe as a young child and has left a permanent scar. And there is a TV preacher who claims to be able to work miracles and heal. And she is traveling to go see him to get this scar healed. Wow. Okay. The musical Violet has a really deep meaning within it. It really talks about the beauty within somebody, regardless of what their outward appearance is, whether it be their race, their color, ethnicity, all those kind of things that we see on the outside. And people have a lot of preconceived notions about these people when really none of that is what matters. It's what matters what you have on the inside. And Violet really focuses on the way that she looks and how she wants to look like all these other people and she hates the way that she has her appearance but she finds out that none of that is really important and I feel like it's a really big message that we need today that it's not what's important it's on the outside but what's on the inside. So I'll correct one thing she won best score for Fun Home in 2015 and the reason that's important is what won everything in 2016? Hamilton. Right. Yes. Which is what got my daughter interested in theater. Well Fun Home and Hamilton both were um musicals that started at the public theater which is where i worked when i lived in new york for about 10 years and the first thing that happened when i got to uh new york was i went and saw fun home off broadway at the public before i worked there and my friend billy brunson and i who are also a thompson high school graduate walked down the street for probably 15 minutes without speaking because the show was so moving and powerful um and in an intimate space like the public theater before it got to broadway and then as soon as i got my job at the public hamilton opened at the public off Broadway. Um, and so I had to stand in the corner with an usher to see that performance, like sort of illegally, not illegally, but like against the rules of our company. Mm -hmm. um, so I could see Hamilton. And then of course, both shows transferred to Broadway almost uh, back to back. And so we, th when I was at the public, we had a huge fun run on of Broadway shows that were like winning Tony Awards for best musicals, including Fun Home and then the next year, Hamilton. And uh, working on uh, some of the background stuff of Hamilton was a thrilling experience. But Fun Home is the show that really, uh, when I was in New York, probably the most moving and favorite show that uh, occurred at the time that I was living there. That's awesome. And that's, you know, like I said, that's how my daughter, my daughter's 12 now, and she has done several community productions. And so she's super involved in it. And as a dad, that means I'm involved in it. So I know kind of sort of what goes behind the scenes of putting these things together is, you know, you don't, you don't get to show up, have a book in front of you and read lines and go home. Tell us a little bit about the work that goes into these kind of things from you select a show, you get your cast picked and then opening night comes. What's all the making the sausage in the middle so that everybody can enjoy the bin. Okay, so um, it starts out with a really like scary audition process because <laughs> auditioning is like so stressful for me. But um, you show up and then you get callbacks and you gotta like have it memorized and you go up against a lot of really really talented people. Like this year, it was very very hard. I know because I heard them singing the song, and I know it was a very hard decision for Mr. Walker to make. But it's like a really challenging thing that you go through. And then the cast is picked, you meet everybody, and you start working. And you see how many lines you have to learn. And you're like oh yay and then you see how many songs you have to learn and then we have these really long musical practices that we go through and we have a lot of people come in like dj brown he comes in and helps us with our music and miss power she comes and plays the piano for us and it's a very long process of just learning the music and then you think you're done and then it's time to go block the show and learn the lines and you start blocking and doing and everything in between but i'm gonna let madison talk about some of this so i'm not just rambling <laughs> Um, definitely the blocking definitely takes the longest chunk and it is a process and a half for sure. <laughs> it's really nice to be able to see it put on stage and it really starts bringing the show to life. But there are days where it is really, really long and really stressful because you're having to memorize lines and music and where you stand and what you do and your facial expressions all at the same time. And also understand being in the moment and not mem like just repeating lines, but hearing everybody because theater is different every time you do it. And then opening night comes and everyone's nervous and everyone's filled with anxiety. 
and it always happens. It always goes well every time. So whenever we have our music rehearsals, we always start from the beginning and we go all the way until the end. First, we will choose a certain amount of songs to do at first, and we will just go over them and over them and over them whenever we have separate parts and like trios or we have a four part it's we always just have to learn every single part no matter if we get it that day or not we're going to go every week we're going to do the same song over and over again until we get it perfect and even then we get it perfect we have to do it over and over again until we get it astonishingly perfect and I think that once we get it we just go on stage and we perform it's really really fun and also difficult but we do it let me talk a little bit about the stress i put these people through this year because i could not decide what show i wanted to do um of course we had a huge show last year into the woods which is a massive show three hour long show and we had uh, like six seniors important seniors graduate and so uh trying to fit together new pieces of the puzzle that are our current uh members of our cast are was difficult but then uh, after that um once they did an audition, it was months until I decided the show, and then they all had callbacks. And the, diffi- the decision was so difficult to pick the lead of this musical that I um, outsourced my casting to people who did not know them. And I recorded all of them on my phone, and I sent them to my New York friends, some of whom who have been on Broadway and in Broadway shows, some of whom who work in casting, um, and one other friend I have who is a, sort of a music director of sorts look at their musical look at their musical auditions and uh, it was very close but I, I just couldn't make the decision myself I didn't think it was fair to the girls nor did I think I could do it myself so uh, so I, we really take it seriously over here and um, I think the uh, when you come see our show that will be evident so we talked about what goes into the show but I know the work doesn't stop after the final curtain closes. What do you do after? What's the decompression, the takedown, the review? What, what, what is, uh, this is probably more for you, but what, what's there for that? Well, for me, I was just talking about to one of my friends, how I'm at the point of the show now that, um, it's all consuming my brain, like wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. Uh, That's how seriously I take it. Um, to the point where I drive myself crazy and I wish I could just think about something else for a day. It's not possible until the show closes. So the first thing I do is, you know, of course we talk about it incessantly for days after the show closes, what went well, what didn't go well, what we could do better next year. And then I think the time comes where we, that includes the cast, the students uh, are able to sort of, you know, start to let it go and uh, think about what's coming next. But this is such a huge commitment that, uh, um, Sitting with it and being proud of it after it's closed, I think, is important. Uh, It's difficult to reflect on exactly what we're doing when we're doing it. But um, just the huge amount of effort and commitment and um, talent it takes to do something like this for 14 through 18-year-olds, they shock me every day. Uh, I also fight with them every day, but ultimately they are – just exquisitely talented and I just can't believe that we have this kind of talent in our school and um, I want us to sit with it and be proud of it when it's over so I, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy who's forgetting about it the next day sure. in fact I'll probably think about it forever I've been thinking about Into the Woods since it closed in some way or another and so these things really stick with you and as they should and um, I'm just always proud of the work that we do uh, and uh, want to reflect on that afterwards and I know we've talked about We've talked on previous podcasts. Refresh me because I can't remember. Do y'all do one musical a year or is there a fall and a spring? What What's that schedule look like and how? when do you start turning around for the next one? Well, we are kind of flipping things on its head this year because last year we did Elf at Christmas and I thought it was too close to our one act performance. And so the end of this year, we're planning something and what, what that's going to exactly be. Uh, I don't know, and neither do the kids. That's I why they're. Say, I just saw a bunch of kids <laughs> on the table that, like, oh, we are. Thanks. Great. They're looking at each other. So it'll be some kind of performance for our elementary schools because, I, like I told y'all last year in the podcast, I really want to keep that tradition. 
you already heard Abby and Madison talk about how that important that was to them as sure. children. And the tradition had kind of gone away before I got here. And I think it's really crucial to um, not only building our program, but just to uh, bring all of our schools together to do something cool and fun that's not sitting in class every day and, um, you know, learning in a, the traditional manner. And so uh, after our musical, we will – Come down for a few weeks, and then we will get to work on whatever that may be. That will take us a few months. And then we um, have started ending our school year with a gala where um, we dress up real fancy and nice and pretty. And um, we come and have a meal. And then the students pick a theme. For example, last year it was miscast. So they all sang songs from uh, shows and roles that they would never traditionally be cast mm -hmm. in. It was amazing. It was one of my favorite nights of the year. And uh, we'll have a new theme this year and we'll celebrate the season that way. And we give out awards like uh, best newcomer and uh, best uh, lead performance in a show or whatever it may be, uh, which is just a fun sort of way to end the year. Very cool. Okay. So now is when you get to advertise. Uh, I know there are four showings of Violet this year. Um, can you guys tell us when and where those will be? Uh, explain to the public how to go about getting tickets to see it and um, what it means to the community when they show up to see you perform. We have four shows. We have one on March 1st, which is at 730, March 2nd at 3 and at 730, and then March 3rd at 3. So our show is at the Thompson High School Auditorium. You can buy tickets for it on bulldogplayers.org or you can buy them at the door. But if you buy them online, they are cheaper than they are at the door. So you asked why it's important for the community to come. Uh, when you're performing, it is not the same if you have no audience that you're performing to. Because when you have people reacting and laughing and clapping and enjoying themselves, some people think that's rude, but really it just keeps us going because we're like, they're enjoying it. We're doing a good job and it's not, we're boring them and putting them to sleep. And if you have nobody out there that you're looking at to see, it's kind of like, why am I even doing this? I mean, it is for yourself, but it, we're performers. We like to perform for people and it's cool to see the smiles on people's faces that we're making them laugh. We're making them enjoy things or a tear here and there because we're moving them. And that's why we do this. You know, we do this to make an impact on people and to give people this message and in Violet it's that what matters inside of you. And I feel like that's a very deep thing and it's great to be able to share our passion with other people. And if there's nobody to share it with, it's not the same. So something that I knew before I got to Thompson High School to be a teacher was that theater reflects the world and what the what needs to change about the world and I thought that would be something I had to teach and it became very clear and very apparent immediately that the students already knew that that the kids who want to be involved in such a thing understand that art reflects the world in which they are living and um, so you can hear that these ladies are expressing that very beautifully that did not come from me uh, I thought it would go was going to have to but th that's something that's innate I think in people who are artistic and um, so I'm really proud to hear them speak that way so I know in theater across the state, there's some opportunity maybe for some state recognition, which would be amazing. Tell me a little bit about that and what that process looks like. So we have the Schuler Awards in Georgia, and we are being adjudicated for Violet, and we can win a bunch of awards. We can win, like, Best Leading Actress. Abby could win. Um, and last year we were supposed to be adjudicated, but we ended up having to move our date due to some circumstances. But we were still able to have four people go, two for Star Council and two for ensemble and I got to go for star council and it truthfully is probably one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life you go to this huge theater in Atlanta and you get to see how a professional theater works you get to go backstage and I learned how first of all use gaff tape for the first time and like tape chords learn how to properly roll chords you get to work with professional theater people and it's really a great experience and it's really important i think to be able to recognize high school theater at such a high level the schuler awards uh a lead into what are the national high school musical theater awards so should you win the state award you go to the national awards in new york and you know people that win these award they're called the jimmy awards the national musical theater awards you see them in film and television they're tony award nominees they're broadway stars renee rapp who you currently see in uh, Mean Girls, the musical, and who is also a huge pop star right now, was a Jimmy Award winner. So these are really, really uh, crucial um, sort of stages for theater kids to go through. Um, even
even if we don't get nominated for a single award, we still have the experience of our students getting to go be on these ensembles and in these councils and in these uh, sort of technical positions, which I think is really crucial. We can do a lot here at Thompson High School with our technical capabilities. We can't do that. And so, uh, you know, we're not being live broadcast on TV and have, you know, uh, a technician in every single department. You know, it's just a couple of us. So it's a really important um, and exciting opportunity for our kids. And I'm super excited. So I know there's gospel music as part of this show. How are you guys going to present that on stage for this musical? We are having a very special collaboration with the Burke County High School Gospel Choir. And they are absolutely amazing. And we sound great. And just come see the show and you'll you'll enjoy it. You'll think we are top notch and we're going to do great. <laughs> All right. And I know it's kind of skeptical because, you know, we have this kind of like big, huge rivalry in football. I mean, everybody comes to the game because they're like, we got to beat Burke County. And it's this big thing. But in theater, they're actually really, really sweet people. I love the people from Burke County. I've collaborated with the people in Burke County in a lot of different ways in FBLA and in theater when we met them at One Act. But also being able to see a group of people come together and despite the differences that we may have with our football, it's really cool to be able to work with the, the school because there's some really great people up there, and it's been really, really fun working with them. Yes, yeah, so uh, on top of the Burke County Gospel Choir, which is a massive, amazing, cannot believe they sound that way, high school choir, um, we have a nine-piece orchestra, so our music is not canned music. We don't believe in that around here at Thompson High School, do we? Right. No. Um, <laughs> because you cannot quite express yourself the way you can when music is being played live because you sort of have this preconceived idea of how you have to fit your voice within that canned track. And so we have um, a nine-piece band. I'll call it a band this year because it's less orchestration than it is band led by Mr. Les Reagan out of Augusta, who is an just absolutely incredible music director. Um, and certain students, of course, are in our band and then other professionals. And the music in this show, because Violet is taking a, a cross-country journey from North Carolina through Tennessee and all the way to Oklahoma. We have bluegrass and we have gospel and we have um, other folk sorts of music and country and Western. Uh, it spans the genres because of her cross-country travel. Another genius move by composer Janine Tesori. And so you're going to hear all sort of style of music, of course, all with a musical theater flair. And um, I'm really excited about the live music in this production. That's great to hear about your collaboration with Burke County. I know that our folks are still just a little bit better than they are, though. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, thank you all for joining us today. And uh, just to reiterate, Violet will be performed March 1st and 2nd at 7.30 p.m., March 2nd and 3rd at 3 p.m., all in the Thompson High School Auditorium. Tickets are $10, and they're available at bulldogplayers.org or at the door. Thanks to all our listeners for logging on and tuning in. As always, we hope you continue to find ways to get involved in the many great things happening in McDuffie County. By doing so, you can help make your community a reflection of you. And that's it for this dramatic episode of the McDuffie Minute. So when you get a chance, take a minute, support your Bulldog players, and learn a little bit about McDuffie County. Mm-hmm.